All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we are going to make an interactive portfolio. It's gonna be kind of a two-part series. So first thing we do is just show you how to make a, a logo. And then when we're done doing the logo, uh, we'll go and we will work on uh, the interactive component, okay? All right, maybe three parts, maybe more, we'll see. Anyway, uh, we, can we can click Create New, uh, that would be fine, or we can just click a letter. I'm just gonna go ahead and click letter. Um, you're going to see it's going to take a while because InDesign is very slow. Um, earlier, I started making this video and I clicked on letter and it wasn't working. So then I clicked down again and then I double clicked it. And then when I was done, I ended up having five of them. So for all of you people, like it's not working. You just keep jamming on the clicks. Don't do that. All you're doing is making the computer confused, right? It's like tapping on the glass of a fishbowl. Nobody likes it. No, it's not working. Come on. Let's see. There it goes. If I get two of them, I'm going to laugh. Let's see. There's, see how it says six? There was five earlier. And, okay, that's good. Turn lead. Okay, I had to click twice, so now I look like a liar. But anyway, so I'm just going to click on that. But even if you didn't, just uh, have the regular select tool here, have nothing selected. And if you click on the panel, you can choose the properties here. So one thing I do want to change is that we're, um, we're going to do an a interactive PDF. So before, if you remember, we did the facing pages so that they would face each other like a, a, a page document. Well, this is going to be a PDF, right? So you don't usually view a PDF as two pages. Usually you view one at a time. At least that's how I do it. Uh, and also, you know, you could this way it would work on like a mobile device or what have you. So I'm actually going to turn that off as an option. Um, the rest of the settings, I don't think I really need to change. Those are fine. So we'll just leave the rest as it is. That's fine. Um, here we go. We have pages. So uh, what I'm going to do first is make a graphic. Um, what I would like to do is this. I'm going to go to this class. Let's see. All right. Um, I just want to show you something here. Um, let's see. All right. So you can see, yay, look at all these things, right? So hopefully some of you guys are old enough to know Purple Rain. I thought it'd be five minutes. Uh, that was my favorite drawing I did this week. Anyway, um, so what you'll notice is that the examples I made is I did a bunch of these different logo designs, right? So you can see some here. Here's some other ones that I did. Um, and here uh, in the stationery, you can see there's a bunch of different um, logos, okay? Now, I'm not going to get too crazy about, like, the theory behind logo design because if you take Digital Imaging 3, um, uh, newbie teaches it and I think there might be more than just him, but they'll get real in depth with, uh, what you're going to cover as far as that. Like he'll have a whole thing on like branding. And also if you take the, uh, capstone, they'll also cover it. Some is there as well. He'll like have you, you'll make your thesis and have like a controlling theme and all that. So I don't want to get too nuts with it, but generally speaking, what you want is simplicity, um, more than anything else. Right, just because if you keep it simple, it'd be easily reproduced. It's going to be cheaper to create. Uh, it'll be more iconic because icon obviously is generally boiling down an idea. So, uh, but anyway, here you can see I just had a bunch of different designs. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create uh, this one here. Oops, this ah, okay. Hang on, this one here. Uh, I thought this one was it. That one, the one I liked. Yeah, I thought this one worked the well, uh, the the best. Out of, out of these. So we're just going to create that. Uh, and then when we're done with that, I'll show you how to create the other stuff. But um, part of this assignment that I want you to do is to create a logo that's going to go on your interactive portfolio. And this is going to be one part of it. Okay. So what I would suggest though, highly, highly suggest the thing is a lot of times I'll have people and what they'll do, and this goes for basically any digital medium in which people are creating stuff, be it 3d, 2D graphic design, uh, photography, I get, well, maybe not so much that, but um, a lot of times people just try to draw directly in the computer. And if you're drawing directly, like using like a Cintiq tablet, like you're drawing on it, that's okay. But if you're trying to use the, the tools that are in here, I find that it'll sort of guide you into a direction because, you know, like I'm drawing a box and drawing a circle is really easy. The best thing you can do when you're trying to come up with ideas is actually just to do it on pieces of paper. Like draw it on a piece of paper and do a bunch of them. Usually your first idea is not going to be your best one. In fact, it's almost certainly not going to be. I mean, it's very unlikely. Um, 
So you want to do a bunch of drawings. And the reason for that is that you can quickly sketch them out. You're not dealing with technology. You're not dealing with any of that. And also, it comes from here. That's the main reason, is that it comes from here. You're not being influenced by anything. You're not dealing with anything. You're going to be away from the computer, which is also nice. Um, and also, when you go to make the design, and if you were to bring it in, like, scan it and then trace it, um, you will you will try to match it because you're going to try and follow that as opposed to wherever the computer kind of is like, oh, this is close enough. You're not going to be like, that's close enough. It's supposed to look like that. Um, if I had you guys all go in here and I said, oh, I want you guys to make me a, a chair inside of this program, I guarantee that they would all look about the same. But if I had you all draw me a chair, I guarantee they would all look a lot more different. Um, and then if I had said, okay, I want you to make me a a chair, but I want you to draw it and then do it in here, I guarantee there'd be even more of a, a, a disparate thing. So um, it's much, much better to just create a bunch of designs, do it on paper, and then afterwards you can, um, you know, bring it in here. Okay. So I already know what I want to do because I've already, I did a bunch of drawings and stuff. And so, uh, but I highly suggest that for your logo design. And it's something you can do when you're just sitting out. Like if you got kids or something, you can sit out in the park and just do doodles. Or if you take the bus, you can draw. Or, you know, you can do it anywhere, which is nice. And you're not on a computer. So go outside, enjoy. You know, we don't all have to be as pale as me. All right. So go out there and get some sun. Uh, it'll make you feel better. Anyway, so I'm going to work on that. I'm going to show you a couple of basics on how to do this. But a lot of it's it's kind of the same as Photoshop. Um, but there's one tool they have in here that we're going to utilize that's better. Again, like Photoshop, vector tools are not its main go. Like, it's not its main thing. That's Il Adobe Illustrator, which, again, you cover in, in, in Design or Digital Imaging 3. But it is better than Photoshop at doing um, uh, vector art. Okay, so just like Photoshop, you'll notice that it does have the pen tool. Oh, the pen tool, right? So some of you probably hate it, but it has the pen tool, which is pretty neat. Uh, it also has uh, the pencil tool here, which we're not going to use. Uh, it has line tool. And then if you go underneath this, you will see you have the rectangle, ellipse, and the polygon tool, right? So basically, it has those same tools that you would have seen the other ones, um, but a little bit different. So... I am going to make my cone thing first because that's a little bit simpler. And then when I'm done with that, I'll show you how you can kind of use this a little bit. The other thing I'm going to show you. All right. So I'm going to go over to my rectangle tool and I'm just going to make it a rectangle. Because uh, more or less I need kind of that triangle, right? So I'm going to go to my rectangle. And then I'm going to go to my properties. Okay. Rectangle tool, properties. Not really giving me... Well, we'll draw it first, I guess. And then it'll give me the settings. Um, boop. Okay. And then I'll give you my settings. I'm going to take my stroke and I'm going to tell my stroke to no smoke. And then I'm going to go to my fill. And the fill will, I'm just going to make it black. Okay. Big fan of just doing black and white as much as possible or black and nothing. Okay. So we're going to do this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my, my thing here. And I'm just going to scale this a little bit better because it's I'm trying to picture. Okay. Now I need to do a cone shape. Easiest way to do that is I'm going to go to my pen tool. And then uh, if you're on the pen tool, if you hover over an open area, it'll do a plus. If you hover over a thing that's already there, it will do a minus. I'm just going to remove this guy. Click on it. If that's confusing, just go to the delete anchor point and just that will only delete. Get off of there. There you go. Now we have a triangle. Woo! All right. Next, what I want to do is if we look at my cone symbol, right, it's supposed to look like a cone. So this is the tool that I was talking about that is helpful. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, and this time I'm going to choose the ellipse. What I want to do is basically put a circle into this that I'm going to cut out of the other. Okay, so after I draw it, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take the stroke off. It doesn't actually matter, but it'll be easier for demonstration purposes. And then the fill, I'm going to go ahead and make that white so I can see it. Okay, now, oops, cancel. What did I click on? Um, the thing is, like, that's fine, and I'm going to hit Control plus, 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 um, and I'm just going to go this. Let's go a little bit closer again. Now, um, let's take, I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, and uh, or sub-selection. I'm not sure what they call it here, so I'm just going to click and drag, and we'll just pull this up so it's a little bit more of a cone-esque thing. Okay, now, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my regular selection. And I'm just going to use my arrows to move this up a little. Okay. So you see, basically, I have this overlapping this. Now, this is fine, but the problem is it's not actually... This will work here, but it would be better if this shape was actually this instead of just overlapping. This is the thing that's super helpful. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hold shift and select this. And I have both of them selected. I'm going to go to um, window. And we're going to go to object and layout. And then I want you to do pathfinder. And what that's going to do is basically it'll allow us to um, edit vectors um, based off of each other and such. So in this case, the pathfinder part is going to allow me to do what we call booleans. Right. So um, they don't call them booleans in here, but in other things, it's called booleans. And basically, booleans just mean when you take two shapes and you combine them or you take a shape and you take it away from one or you take the part that is in both parts. Um, that's what it does. And you can actually get an idea of the picture right here. So, like, for instance, if I click on this one, it's going to combine the two. And now just so you get an idea, you can see the points here. Now it's one shape and it's white in this case. Right. So it'll combine the two shapes. In my case, what I want to do is cut it out. So I'm going to click on this one, and that's actually going to cut the one shape out of the other. So that was this one. If that one doesn't work, then it needs to be this one. It depends on which one's on top. Okay. So uh, you can see, hey, right? So now I got my kind of cone shape here. I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, and uh, I'm just going to control plus again to make it a little bit bigger and easier to deal with. And this should actually probably be down. I don't know why I moved it up, but. We'll go like that. And then you can see I got these extra points here. Uh, I'm going to take, oops, I'm going to control click and drag this marquee select. And I'm just going to move this in a little bit. And I'm going to pull this handle a little bit just so it's a little more bell, bell you know, a little more of a bell curve. I'll do it here as well. And then um, what I can do is you see that's a little straight pot, straight spot. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the delete anchor point and I'll delete the top one and the bottom one. All right, and voila, I've got kind of, uh, I guess you don't really like the look of it. I'm going to move this this way a little bit. Let's grab this one a little bit too. And yeah, I keep moving it. I'm trying to just grab this. Jeez, you're killing me, Smalls. There we go, like that. Maybe I can grab this handle. and Yeah, but you can make some adjustments just by grabbing the Bezier handles and, and, and tweaking it, okay? So this is meant to represent kind of my C in my thing here. Now, I want to show you what else you could do with this Pathfinder, just so you get an idea of how well this would work. So let's say I want to do it. I'm going to do like a, a photography company or something, right? Well, what I could do is go to oops, go to the rectangle tool, right? And uh, make sure my fill is black. And I'll do like, I'm just going to make like a camera. So I got a camera here. Fill, let's see, make it black and stroke. I'm just going to turn that off. Come on. And off. Okay. And then what I'll do is, oops, cancel. Um, I will uh, hold Alt, click, and drag. Put it like this. So it's a little bit more like a box. Okay. And then I'm going to hold Alt, click, and drag again. It's the same thing as doing Control C. If when you hold Alt and you click and drag I'm, with the regular select tool, it makes a duplicate. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to select both of them, and I'm just going to combine them, right? Then I'm going to use my delete anchor point, and I am going to delete this anchor point and this anchor point. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to go ahead and make this one white. I'll put him. Come on, get up here. Or her, shouldn't assume. I don't know what kind of camera this is. And I could pull this one in a little bit. It's not important that you make it white. I just like making it white because it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, then I'll select both of them again. And this time I will cut. And now again, if you look, that's now, that's now, the shape is now this box, right? And then, I mean, I'm just going to do stuff because, but let's say I wanted to do, you know, uh, a circle on top, right? So maybe I want it to be a half a circle. So I'm going to hold shift so it keeps it constrained. And then um, again, I wish I need to set this setting so it's um, not this. Bill, come on. You could do it. There we go. And we'll just do black. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose the rectangle tool and we'll just... 
Maybe I can just grab these both here. So I'll grab both of these and we'll just cut the one out of the other. So now I only have that part and I can stick this on top, right? Like so. And then maybe, you know, combine that with this one. So we'll just do the mesh, you know, combine. And let's say I want to do just a custom shape or something. So I'll, I'll use the regular pen tool and then I'll just, um, I want to do like a C in here. I don't know why. I'm just spitballing here. So uh, what I'll do is I will click and click and then I'm going to click and drag and then click, click, and then I will click and drag up and then I'll close it by hovering over this and click. And now I've got a really bad looking C. What's a pirate's favorite letter? He probably said R. No, it's the C. <laughs> Dad jokes. Okay. Let's say I did a good job. You, you know, if you if you look like this, it looks great. I'm gonna take this guy. I'm just gonna shrink it up. Shrinkity dink. Oops. Okay. And I'm gonna stick it up here. And let's shrink it up some more. Right, and I could take that to this and then just again cut it out. And then you can see now that's cut out of the shape. I could do you one better though. Um, actually, let me show you another way of doing it. Okay, so let's just delete that. Let's just write a C because my C is never going to look as good as an actual one, right? So I'll just take the text tool, click in here, and then, um, okay, we'll draw a box. Uh, and then, let's see, there it goes. It's pretty slow. Okay, and I'm just going to do Arial because that's the most basic font, Arial. It's a basic, uh, um, and then we'll do uh, San, uh, Sans Serif font like that. And I'm just going to write a capital C, okay? That does not look like, and it's not an Arial. You lied to me. You did not give me what I asked for. Arial. There we go. We'll do Arial Black. Great. There it goes. Okay. What you can do with this is I could take this. This is a text, right? So if I double click on it, you can see, right? It's gonna, I can, I can put it in there. But what I can also do with this, I could select, select this, go to um, type, create outlines. What that's going to do is it's going to convert it. So you, so you, so you type something out, whatever text you want, you select the text and then you just go um, type, uh, where are you at again? Lost it, create outlines. Okay, what that's going to do is it actually converts it to a vector. So now it's just those outlines and I can actually grab points and pull them. So let's say I want to stretch the C out for some reason, right? So I could go one and then I'll just unselect this. Oops, okay, I meant to unselect it. And then do another one. Right, so I could stretch out that C. Let's say it's something I want to do, or or I just want to take it and you know do other things with it, like manipulate it in some sort of way, right? So let's say you want to make kind of a custom thing. You could draw it out and then you know convert it over. Now the problem with that though is that now this is no longer text. So if I had a whole logo and I had a name that said like Pepsi, and I typed it out and then I did this gray outlines, I can no longer. It's just a shape. It's the same thing as this. So it's not text. You can't manipulate it. I can't do any of my kerning or line height or any of that other stuff. Now it's just straight up a uh, the vector. So there's not anything I can do. That's just what it is. Okay. So, but it does allow me to make it like this. The other thing that's really neat about doing it this way is that I could take this InDesign file. I don't even have to package it because this is a vector. So it's just, it's the points that make up the shape. It's not, they don't need to have the font locally in order to make this read anymore because there's, this is no longer a font. This is no longer type, it's a vector. So anyway, so I can make my C that way. I can take this guy up here, you know, and then shrink this down or whatever, go like that. Take the two and then do, you know, cut out and voila, right? So hopefully you get the idea that what you can do is you could basically draw out, you know, all sorts of graphics here. Yeah, it's not going to work because it's not a shape. Um, you could draw out all sorts of, um, get out of there, delete, there you go. Um, you could draw out different squares and circles and stuff, and you could break down a lot of things by squares and, and, and what have you. 
and then just use that pathfinder to just combine the shapes and then edit them. So like, let's say I wanted this to be a little bit more robust. So let's say I want it to be more rounded. I could just go to my pen tool. I'll go to the convert tool here. I'm just going to go to the corner and I'm just going to click and just do a little bit of a, a little bit of a, right? So I'll just convert these a little bit just so it's a little bit softer. Let's say I do kids photography and I don't want my design to look quite so harsh. I go through and just give it like it, like you've just pumped it up with a little bit of air, right? Um, so you can go ahead and then you could adjust all of your points using the, the various pen tools um, and just combine it or delete them or whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay. So you should be able to come up with a logo using those tools there. All right. Hopefully that makes some sense. All right. So I do not want this one, but I was just showing you it. So, uh, you could make a relatively complicated shape, but again, you want to try and keep it simple anyway. So, um, generally one of the secrets to making good vector graphic logo artwork anyway, is, is limiting the number of points in your vector graphics. So, uh, it'll just make it cleaner. And I actually don't like, oops, come on. You can do it. There we go. This should probably be straight. I think there we go. Okay. So I got this. It looks terrible. I'm not really very happy with it to be rather honest. We'll just leave it. Okay. So now I just need to write the cone part. Okay. So I'm just going to exit out of this. Now, this is what I suggest doing. Okay. So I think I mentioned it before, but basically normally when you have text, you want two fonts generally. You want your heading font and then you want your body font. Okay. Heading font is the stuff that draws you in. It's interesting. Um, that would be like your company font, right? Uh, and then the body font is the stuff that's a little bit more legible. You can read it in longer form. Um, and so uh, use it for large bodies of text and things like that. So what I'm going to do with this logo is I want to just make a font that's going to be like my logo font. And then I just want one for body so that, you know, I can put like an address and stuff like that on there so that it's a little bit easier to work with. Um, I'm not going to do anything you don't already know to do or already know how to do at this point. Um, but this is what I, this is the process in which I suggest that you do. So I'm just going to write like this and I'm just going to write one and I'm going to go to the one like this. Okay. And then I'm just going to select it like that. And I'm just going to literally go down the line like so until I find one that, because this is cone. So it's the end of, so it's not really one. It's going to be cone because this is the C. R, right um so i'm just gonna go down the line and find ones that i kind of like this one because it's sort of very round so oh let's also change the size of this because it's just muy pequeño okay so we'll just go like this so let's see one of these was really round no it doesn't look so round to me We'll go with this one. Okay. So once I'm happy with that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my regular select tool. I'm going to double click on this. I'm just going to hold alt, click and drag it. So I get one underneath it. I'm just going to double click on this. And I actually, you probably, hang on a second. No. Uh, I'm going to uh, just select all, control A to select all. And I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to go down the line again. See, that's the problem. I need to make sure it's extended. So I'm going to extend this out a little bit. So that makes sure it fits. Okay. And then I'm going to go again here. I'm going to click in there. I'm just going to go down arrow and I'm just going to look for ones that I think might work both literally and figuratively. It doesn't seem, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it's, it's giving me a big to do about it. Okay. We'll do a round one. That looks fine. Okay. So I'll call that good. I'm going to go back to our regular select tool. Alt, just going to click this down, right? And then I'll double click inside of this one, select it all. I chose another aerial. I don't know, one trick pony. But I'm just going to look, I don't know, for fonts that I that give me the feeling of what I'm going for. So we'll go with that one too, okay? And I'll do one more. But I would do like 10 of these if I were you. I actually, what I would do is go right down the line. Um, so I'm going to click in there, 
uh, like to, to drag it. I just don't want to spend all day on this. Okay, I did something there. Get out of here. Oh, because I'm in. No, oh, thank you. I didn't need you. Okay. We'll go with this one. Okay. All right. But I would do a whole bunch of these um, and uh, see what you have, right? Then from there, what I would do, take the one you like the most. Uh, I'm just going to go with this one, we'll say. Put this guy over here. I'm going to, um, and then these you can either keep on the side, but I'm just going to delete them. And I'm going to go like this. I'm just going to double click the corner here so it makes the box the same size. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift. Control allows me to change the size of it, and then Shift keeps it proportionate. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it so that it looks correct. Right? I'm just going to line it up, and we'll call that, maybe go over a little bit like that. Okay, so now there's my cone. And then I need, I'm just going to write Productions. So I'm just do the same exact thing that I just did. I'm just going to go across, and typically you're going to want something that's in the, um, so I'm going to write productions, productions, and I'm going to say that one looks good. I don't really care that much. So we're going to say productions, um, and let's just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. I'll say 18. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to stretch it out anyways. I'm going to click on it, then double click this corner, and we're going to put it down here, and I'm going to drag it. Oops, I'm holding shift as I drag it. Oops. Control and shift. Sorry, forgot to hold control. There we go. And so it's a little bit off over here. So I'm going to, oops, come on. Control and shift. There we go. I want to try and get this alignment as close to this as possible, right? Because we want good alignment. Yeah. Ah, whatever. I don't care. Okay. So we'll say that that's my logo. And I'm going to say that that's good and we're all hunky dory and, you know. Oh, whoops, it's kind of overlapping there. I didn't notice that. Okay, so we'll say that's my logo. I think it's good, uh, but that's what you should do. So I would go, I would try to um, grab a piece of paper, just do a bunch of doodles. Think about what you want to make for your logo. Now, you can do one of two things. You can either, whatever your major is, be like, oh, I'm going to be graphic designer, or I'm going to be a web designer or something, like make a web design company and then make a logo for it. Or just make something up. I have people do plumbing or like medieval armor. I've had people do all sorts. I don't really care what it is. Uh, whatever you think would be a neat thing to do, you know, or maybe like a gamer thing. I don't know, whatever you kids do these days. Um, whatever you want to do of those things, uh, make a logo and then, you know, make it mix. Uh, so come up with a bunch of different logo ideas. Uh, and then um, you can uh, go on there, look for a font, try to find ones that work, that will associate and work together. Uh, and then make basically a logo. So this is where I kind of want you to be uh, at, okay? And then the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make the um, the actual interactive uh, part, okay? But we're basically gonna take this and duplicate it on multiple pages. Well, we're actually not gonna duplicate it, but you'll see, all right? So uh, see you in the next one.